Hello. It's rather strange to stand up here and do a little monologue in the bright light on the red dot. Often we find technology disengages us from the places we inhabit. You know, we move through our cities and we're a little disengaged, we're distracted. We're always on um, a mission. How can we use technology to um, enable us to have more meaningful connection to place? We believe this is through a use of virtual heritage. My name's Nat Harold, and I work at a place called AI3D. And there our core focus is really around advanced visualisation technologies, such as virtual reality, augmented reality, interactive software that's four-dimensional and real-time, and we create simulators. At the core of how we do this is this virtual world creation. We create synthetic environments that are spatially accurate, in very high definition, and a good representation. These are convincing and at one-to-one -one scale. Our clients come to see us, architects like this guy, engineers, designers, developers, artists and museums, because they have things they need to communicate. We offer them lenses through these synthetic environments to communicate large volumes of information effortlessly. We've observed how our clients and their users interact with these synthetic environments and really see the power of being able to transfer that knowledge rapidly. We build bridges, tunnels, roads, and all kinds of town inf infrastructure. And we're working in time that's usually in the future. You know, two years, five years, 10 years, 50 years. What if we could use this technology that we use for these guys to transfer large volumes of heritage information instantly, effortlessly? This can be done by engaging with the past. We've come up with a method where we create these historical layers that are spatially referenced over our existing city, a virtual heritage. We do this because we can provide a real context over the very fabric of our city today and understand the past easily. We do this through accessing archival photos, plans, elevations and other data. And then we calibrate that all together, which doesn't always fit. Then we try and extract from that information. Sometimes that calibration process allows us to infer more information, such as this facade on the right that was never photographed, just by extrapolating and, and calibrating different data forms. I'll just show you a montage quickly. This is um, Edward Street, 1880, 1910, 1930, 1955. Again, 1930. All these buildings, except for a couple there, are lost. All the stories and places we inhabit, or of the places we inhabit, are kind of fractured and spread across different sources. What we can provide here is a context with which to retell or insert stories about our past and places. We can control the weather. We can make these things do anything. So we can have fires or floods, various things. These worlds can be of very high quality. They're in high definition and they're full colour. They're really quite powerful in terms of setting the backdrop to how these cities or how our cities looked. And then we can actually place these stories in their actual context. This is not a photo, this is a reconstruction. And they can be really quite convincing in their photographic quality. Imagine if all you had to do was pull up a pad to any streetscape in the city, pan across it, choose your time. And then from that we link externally all kinds of databases where you can just listen to stories or read stories, interact. And it's just convenient, it's easy. These advanced lenses that we can offer really can enhance our communication of heritage. 
So technology, looking through technology can really help us have more meaningful connection to place if we can transfer that knowledge and understanding instantly and effortlessly. Ironically, a talk about time is now out of time, so thank you. <laughs>